What's going on everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch and today we're going to be giving you the Pro Baptiste Guide. Going over all aspects of his kit, all of his abilities, and the best play style to go along with it to maximize your value on the new support. Footage from today's video came from studying some of the best support players in the world. Footage taken from their live streams that you can find linked in the description to check them out when they play live. Lord Jonek, ML7, and Custa all made some serious plays with the new hero that we'll be breaking down here today. Now, first things first, if you take nothing else from this video, you have to learn that high ground is key, which is always the case with a lot of heroes, but it means even more to Batiste. Using your exo boots to get up onto a high ground perch will allow you to hit your shots easier, but I think even more importantly, have a vantage point to help in your decision making. Baptiste tosses down healing, damage, and the life-saving immortality field, and the more of the battle you can see, the better you can decide what to use at the right time. Also, it's a great way to get you away from all of the chaos of the fight. Look how ML7 avoids the Earth Shatter by going vertical, saving his team, and then having a good position to be able to turn, heal, and damage however his team needs. Now, another technique that ML7 does, being able to use high ground, is remember, there's no penalty for Baptiste to jump up and down to high ground because his jump is so powerful and you always have it available. So because of that, even though his regenerative burst ability requires you to be very close to your teammates for them to get the healing benefit, feel free to jump on down there when they're starting to take a little bit extra heat and then peace out of the battle, jumping right back up to your high ground perch. Also, while we're on the subject of Exo Boots, he often prepares Exo Boots way ahead of time, just as a dodge technique, even if he doesn't end up using it. Now, I'm sure this does have some downsides, as crouching lowers your profile a bit, which might make you a bit easier to hit, but if you're not getting shot at anyway, and you're looking to dodge upcoming engages or abilities, I mean, here he just Mario jumps over Reinhardt, it's probably something worth doing a big percentage of the time, I think. Now let's talk about his key ability, Immortality Field, where the first key about it is that it is the greatest counter we've ever seen to Graviton Surge. Anytime the enemy has Grav, you should always try to keep the Immortality Field on deck to toss into the mass. The biggest application of this will start to develop depending on what heroes you go up against in your games as well, but really having this field at the ready and having the proper positioning to drop it at a moment's notice beats just about every relevant ultimate in the game. But also it has some insane impact on an objective brawl as well. Watch how Custa gets value from afar, poking away at the distance, and is able to lay down his immortality field to keep a couple teammates alive, stalling the cart at minimum health, buying enough time for the team fight to flip the other way. It used to really only be the GOATS Brigida centered brawl comp that could sustain itself perfectly on an objective and force you off it or kill anyone who tried to contest but now when you have the field all the focus fire in the world won't do you any good and you won't get the objective until you either deal with the field or forced to take the fight elsewhere the thing i want to stress as well the longer you can wait to use field the better landing it down on teammates who are critical as your enemies are going to try to pursue them like here this baby diva is bait for ml7 to turn this fight around giving his squishy teammate infinite health and flipping the script with his ultimate to pop this overextension in its face. Much like Mercy did in previous metas, you can force the enemy to think more carefully and be much more defensive themselves in their way of playing, as going aggro with some of your most valuable cooldowns and ultimates can get flipped on its head so severely with just this one ability. Now as the play of this character develops over time, we're going to find even more areas on maps where you can find these extremely cheeky positions. Notice how Custa puts it behind this pillar, out of line of sight of the enemy, but in line of sight of his teammates. Keep in mind, it won't reach them around the corner. They will have to be able to see it themselves, but you don't even need a barrier in this instance to be able to save your entire team from death, which is going to allow for some interesting types of team comps to develop whenever you can find spots on maps like this, where you can use the field and the enemy can't see it to destroy it, meaning you just get free real estate, forcing the enemy to decide, are they going to rush in headlong to go destroy this field before they do any relevant damage, or are they going to be forced to freeze and take more poke, which especially in some of the best comps that feature Baptiste is what they want to do anyway. Way. Now, on our next section, the good news is Batiste is a fun and challenging aim dependent hero, and the bad news is Batiste is an aim dependent hero. Now, luckily, his alternate fire heal nades have
have quite a large area of effect. So if you start to learn to have them splash up against the walls and really learn the extent of how high it goes when you hit it on the ground, just like Ana's nade, you can start to land his heal nades more easily. I think it's the hit scan three round burst gun that's going to give you a bit of trouble because if you don't land all of its shots, it starts to look pretty weak. But if you can land shots and especially headshots, you can delete things almost as good as some of the best DPS in the game and is also going to be required to get value out of amplification matrix in my opinion. Now because the three round burst has a bit of climb, you can counteract this by pulling down on your aim to compensate for its small kick up. Mastering the character will require you to do this to hit really long shots, especially hitting multiple in the head, but I think you'll find a lot of times this won't be required of you if you're tracking your target well enough. Notice how Custa tracks the center of mass of the enemy Batiste player and allows the climb of the three round burst to roam towards the head hitbox. I think this is a good idea because it'll allow you to have more leeway as a target's moving to go for the easy shot and allow the kick to go up towards the head, increasing the percentage of shots you land rather than going for too many head shots and whiffing when the classic Overwatch head hitbox wobble comes into effect. Because remember, you do 25 damage per bullet, which doesn't do a lot against tanks, but it's certainly enough to put a big hurt on squishy targets. So I would advise accuracy over the entire burst is more important than stressing out on making all of your shots headshots. Although the dream scenarios will result in some Widowmaker-esque deletions if you are able to land them. But I think you'll find because Batiste's weapon is so accurate and his mobility is so insane to give him angles above shields and good lines of sight all the time, that alone is going to give you a lot of firepower potential when you carefully line up your shots and let the climb do the work for you. Instead, what's more important is maintaining the horizontal tracking, which really starts to show off when you combo this aim technique with his amplification matrix ultimate, doubling his damage output, making him do 50 damage per bullet, 150 per burst, and 100 damage per headshot, meaning two in the body and one in the head, entirely deletes a 200 health point target. Now, originally I thought this ultimate was required for you to pair up up with other DPS to get value out of, but when you've got numbers like those and the high ground advantage he already gets, I wouldn't be afraid to just use this on your own as long as you've got the aim to delete a squishy or two with the vantage point you have. This damage is so severe, here ML7 is able to damage through Transcendence healing. That's remarkable. Trance does 300 healing per second, and between his matrix and extra 30% from Mercy Beam, he's able to out DPS that into this Zarya's head. Starting to figure out these breakpoints in your games is going to be a really big deal, and there's a lot of potential for even some of the best support ults in the game, Trance and Lucio Sound Barrier, to get out damaged by certain combos like this, especially when you pair the Matrix with something like Bongo for 150 damage amp, making something like the new Junkrat nade do 325. As for his healing grenades, you'll find your easiest shots when you're close to your teammate or above them shooting down on them, but for trickier shots that are at longer distance, remember the Batista nades explode just like Ana's bio nade. So you actually can aim at geometry on the map rather than having to go for direct hits all the time. For example, shooting at the ledge was a better option than trying to predict my Genji's erratic movement. In general though, you're not going to want to try to be using Batiste to heal up characters like Genji and Farah because the shots are going to be near to impossible a lot of the time. But it will be much easier if you remember that the heal radius extends quite a bit outside the area of impact so that you don't have to to aim directly at what you want to hit. And a really cool tip for aiming his immortality field is to test out the arc of your healing nades because the field travels at the same angle, meaning that if you fire a few warning shots just to feel out where the field's gonna go, you can actually line up perfectly long range immortality fields. So key as if you miss this thing, it's like wasting an ultimate, the cooldown is that long. In our last section, I'm going to cover one of the most complicated aspects of playing flex support in Overwatch, and that's target prioritization. Remember when I said awareness was important on the battlefield? Well, this is where you show that skill. To maximize Batiste's output, much like you would with Ana, but even more so, it's going to come from juggling everything that we covered here today. Much of that comes from reading the state of the battlefield and doing the quick maths it takes to know where you're going to be 
needed most. Now from studying ML7, I've noticed that he prioritizes healing above all else, maybe even biasing a bit in spots where he could have stretched the limit a bit more. What I mean is, when you pop down the immortality field, you have a choice to make whether to allow your teammates to attempt to fend for themselves on chip health while you do meaningful damage to the enemy versus trying to heal them back up during that time frame. There's arguments that can be made to prioritizing both, because if the field gets destroyed, well, your infinite health goes away pretty darn quick, but also you might argue that you want to get the maximum offense you can while your teammates are unkillable to get a man advantage and then go back to healing afterwards. Sort of like the same problems you have to figure out when playing Lucio and you pop a sound barrier that basically makes everyone invincible for a moment, do you heal their health points underneath or speed them in so that they can maximize that shielding because time's a wasting on that offensive capability of the support utility? From what I could tell, Custa and Jonek seem to prefer going for those aggro moments just a little bit more than ML7 did, and I think that's probably a byproduct of the level of teammates you have. If you're used to playing at the pro level, not in ranked, teammates are are much better at avoiding damage. I mean, NYXL is the best at this. Their tanks take like no damage, allowing for the DPS and supports to carry from range like they do. But I will say, if you find yourself having to bias healing too much, you may start to think to run a different healer because I really think it's the balance of key opportunistic damage with his hit scan rifle backed up by the healing he has as a support that really makes Baptiste a threat. And overall, there's better pure healers in the game. And if your goal is to pump the most health into a teammate tank, you might want to switch off to Ana or Moira instead. Well, guys, it's going to be everything for today's video on Pro Baptiste gameplay. If you did enjoy it and found it useful, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. Be sure to check out all the streamers that were featured in today's video, linked in the description and as well our Twitter. And before you forget, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. That's been it for me, I've been Frito. For your Overwatch, I'll see you guys next time.